Greetings one and all and welcome to Beyond the Walls. This Saturday is Remembrance Day, which is observed here in Canada and in other countries of the Commonwealth of Nations to mark the end of the First World War over a century ago. In the beginning of, of November, many Canadians wear poppies as a part of the Remembrance Day observance. The symbol was inspired by the poem In Flanders Fields, written by John McCrae, a Canadian physician, soldier, and poet, who was struck by the incredible loss of life on the Western Front. On Remembrance Day, we recall the sacrifices of soldiers during times of war and in peacekeeping duties of those also not soldiers who are serving on the home front including those who objected to fighting as a matter of conscience. We begin our service with a special ministry of music. Thank you, John. Today is the sixth of our nine Enduring Principles Sundays, and we are focusing on the theme, worth of all persons. God views all people as having inestimable and equal worth. God wants all people to experience wholeness of body, of mind, of spirit, and of relationships. We join with Jesus Christ in bringing that good news to the poor, the sick, the captive, and the oppressed. 
we seek to uphold and restore the worth of all people, individually and in community, challenging unjust systems that diminish human worth. How do we do that? So many express concern that by including certain people at the table, we are excluding others. For example, by actively affirming women in leadership, by promoting full inclusion of LGBTQIA plus individuals, aren't we excluding other individuals who fervently believe discrimination is justified by their personal interpretation of the Bible? So there's a misconception here that is as popular as it is, in my view, perverse. It's the idea that laws inhibit freedom, that having rules make people less free. In fact, the opposite is true. Laws create freedom. The condition of lawlessness or anarchy results in injustice, oppression, and suffering without any recourse. Without law, not only might, it's not only might that makes right, but also arbitrary happenstances make right as predatory associations grow into abusive syndicates and systems that oppress individuals, however much might they may otherwise have had individually. So this principle is admirably taught in the classic film, A Man for All Seasons. The 16th century English philosopher and statesman, Sir Thomas More, is having an argument with his son-in-law, Will Roper. Roper charges, you would give the devil the benefit of law. Moore replies, what would you do? Cut a great road through the law to get after the devil? And Roper heartily agrees, yes, I'd cut down every law in England to do that. Then Moore concludes, oh, and when the last law was down and the devil turned round on you, where would you hide, Roper? The laws all being flat. This country is planked thick with laws from coast to coast, man's laws, not God's. And if you cut them down and you're just the man to do it, do you really think you could stand upright in the winds that would blow then? Yes, I give the devil the benefit of the law for my own safety's sake. So laws create freedom. Of course, it's always true that unjust laws create injustice which means that laws must be made ever more just and they must be enforced ever more fairly for both the mighty as well as for the marginalized. The same is true for speech. There is an erroneous belief that freedom of speech is the ability to say anything, anytime, anywhere, without consequences. So once again, this is a fundamental misconception that results in injustice, oppression, and suffering without any recourse. So giving anarchic license for hateful, bigoted, and counterfactual speech does not result in freedom. Rather, it empowers bullies and bigots to oppress groups that they seek to marginalize. It robs individuals in these groups of their freedom to speak safely. It requires them to continually justify their own existence and identity simply to be seated at the table. The heavenly kingdom proclaimed by Christ is often called upside down because it overturns the oppressive systems of this world. When Jesus taught, blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God, this is not an exclusionary teaching, but it does model the principle that in order to be truly inclusive, a community must proactively set a place at the table for those marginalized by our earthly societies after that place has been secured, after injustices have been righted within our sacred space, yes, there is still room at the table. This is why we must each recognize 
the fundamental worth of all persons, beginning with the marginalized, for our community to be truly welcoming. Today, we will share the sacrament of the Lord's Supper with disciples and seekers in all the world's hemispheres. As we seek to become the body of Christ, may we, as individuals, truly listen to voices we are not always privileged to hear. Each week, our complete service is translated into the Church's three primary languages, French, Spanish, and English, by our translation team, including Sandra Rodriguez and Kahilani Faaturai Drolet. We thank you both. This allows French and Spanish disciples to read along when we provide ministry in English. Today, we, who are native English speakers, have the opportunity to share in that experience and hear ideas we might otherwise never hear, as our brother Kahelani will join us from the remote island of Reunion in the Indian Ocean off Madagascar to preach our communion message. And we go now live to Los Angeles, California, where Jeannie Kuhn is here to read our call to worship. Jeannie, welcome back to Beyond the Walls. Thank you, John. It is a pleasure to be back with everyone in Beyond the Walls. Our call to worship is Jesus's teaching about the worth of every individual, as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 29 through 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more value than many sparrows. Amen. Oh, 
California, we head across the mountains to Denver, Colorado, where Sarah Ritchie is here to offer our invocation. Sarah, thank you for being with us on Beyond the Walls. Thank you. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly God, I come to you today to invite your Holy Spirit to be with each one of us. We are turning our attention to the enduring principle of the worth of all persons. And even as we do so, we are surrounded by examples of how easy it is to reject this truth. At this very moment, we see a world torn apart from war, cruelty, bigotry, greed, hate, and profound and innumerable inequalities. Violence so extreme that it's hard for us to fathom makes its way to our news feeds daily. And as we also know, the worth of all persons is cast aside in more subtle yet highly impactful and hurtful ways when vulnerable populations face prejudice and injustice. Frankly, it feels overwhelming, God. I pray today that we can turn our hearts to you to receive guidance about how we can serve this enduring principle. Please help us slow down enough to see how each person around us has qualities that are valuable. Please assist us in recognizing the unconscious biases that we all carry so that we can work towards seeing others as you see them, God. Please help us remember that you have created us to have a collection of gifts and talents that no other person on earth possesses. Please help us remember that every person was created to live with dignity and that you do not love or favor one group of people over another. Please bring to our minds the many examples of how Jesus looked past wealth and status, gender, intellect, beauty, and education to cherish and uphold the marginalized and the humble. My prayer today is for each of us to find new ways to promote peace and justice for every soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. go now live to Portsmouth, Ohio, where Benny Blevins is here to teach today's lesson of the Living Church. Benny, we are delighted to have you with us today on Beyond the Walls. I want to thank John and everyone at Beyond the Walls for having me today and for this opportunity to share with you about my congregation, Sanctuary Community of Christ. Our story reminds me of Doctrine and Covenants 161 3C. Be patient with one another, for creating sacred community is arduous and even painful, but it is to loving community such as this that each is called. Be courageous and visionary, believing in the power of just a few vibrant witnesses to transform the world. Be assured that love will overcome the voices of fear, division, and deceit. 
In 2017, a small handful of vibrant witnesses heard the cry for help from the family of a transgender child in our community here in Portsmouth, Ohio. Those witnesses were made up of Community of Christ members and members of the LGBTQ plus community. The Portsmouth Welcoming Community was born with the mission to create a spiritual home for everyone, especially the LGBTQ plus community. Embodying the love and mission of Christ so that all will know that they are loved and of great worth. We were vibrant and active with nearly 20 persons in attendance. However, the pandemic, fear, and mental illness created a perfect storm that nearly destroyed us. As pastor, I began seeking God's wisdom and guidance to discern how to keep this congregation and ministry alive. I pray daily. I kept hearing the hymn, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. And I knew Spirit was calling me and my congregation to be a sanctuary for those who have been oppressed, marginalized, and told that they are an abomination to God. We are in the process of expanding our ministry beyond the foothills of Southern Ohio to become a hybrid community of Christ ministry, reaching out to those in our area as well as the world via the internet. We meet both in person and online and have a weekly online devotion and community building time called Queering Conversations. God has and is preparing us to be sanctuary and God continues to reveal all that we can be and do to create Zion for queer persons and all God's beloved. Please bow with me in prayer. Jesus, you have called each of us individually and as sacred community to be courageous and visionary as we walk the path of the disciple with you. Lord, you were and are a living sanctuary for those on the margins of society, and you are calling us to be sanctuary as well. Many people have been hurt by religion and those who say that they are your disciples. Many have been hurt and are afraid of you. Lord, prepare us to not only be your sanctuary, but also to be sanctuary to those who need your love. Amen. Well, hello there. Happy Sunday or Monday morning for some of you. It might even be Monday afternoon. Whatever the time of day it is, wherever you are, it is an honor to be able to have you in my home in Central Michigan. My name is Noelle Gafka, if we have not met yet. And I always love these opportunities to just say hi because it is important that you are here. Not only does that give me somebody to talk to, uh, aside from the cats, but it allows us to see truly how big our, excuse me, our community is in all the different places beyond the walls that we go to. And it is exciting each time I get to write down your name on my sheet of paper, which my book today is probably in reverse, but it says choose joy, which I am choosing joy tonight. Every time that I write down your name, it is a joyful experience. So hello, hello. 
A couple of quick notes before we get into the true global welcome. We are going to have a short after service experience today. We have an amazing lecture that's going to be presented to you at eight o'clock uh, on both Facebook and YouTube. So we want to make sure because we have communion in our service, our service is already going to go a little bit longer than normal. So I don't want to take up all of that precious time because I know that John and Leandro are probably going to be sitting over in Toronto going, Will you just stop talking already? So instead, we're going to do a shorter after worship experience, and that'll give us enough time to have a, a comfort break, if you will, and then to come back and experience the lecture. What is it? Amazing. That's what it is. And John will share with you what that is a little bit later in the service. Also, it is communion. So you are welcomed wherever you are and whatever you have to use for emblems is perfect. Sometimes we feel like because we don't have bread or grape juice or juice of any kind that we can't participate. No, we celebrate all different items for communion. In fact, I have a marshmallow from Lucky Charms. That is going to be my Jesus for the day. I did not go to the store at all. I, I literally have been on camera since about 9 a.m. this morning. <laughs> so it's been a wonderfully long day. So whether you have a Lucky Charm marshmallow, a carrot, a piece of bread, a bite of your dinner or breakfast, whatever it may be, have it at the ready and be prepared to share the meal with us. All right, let's take a moment to say hello. Of course, we've got Jeannie. Hello, friend. It's good to be with you. Of course, John and Leandro. Hello. It's always wonderful to say hi to you because you say hi to us. Pamela Luce. Pam, you and I have been together since nine o'clock this morning. This is exciting that we get to spend the whole rest of the day <laughs> together too. Hello, hello. We've got Charles Kincaid in Independence, Adam Euchre in Michigan. I think you're about two hours from me. I like that. Not that you're two hours away, but that you're in Michigan with me. Nicola Wood in Alberta. We've got Jackie and David Mueller. We've got Roy from the United Kingdom. We've got Wednesday Jones. We've got Katie. We've got 322 Messenger. Hi there. It's good to have you. We have Marty Fisher, Mary Welton, Eunice. It's always a joy to worship with you, Eunice. We've got Teresa in Indiana. I am still adding you onto my prayer list and continuing to uh, lift you up every single day, my friend. We've got Mimi in Kansas. We've got Karen in Kansas. We've got a lot of Kansas. This is great. I like it. Robert Thompson in Australia. Yay. Happy that you're here. Sherry Gordon, Lynn. We've got Lynn here. We've got Cindy, Lisa Banks. It is amazing to have you here. And in Keto 5 in Phoenix, thanks for reminding us how cold it is here because you are basking in some 91 degree temperatures there. I love it. Caleb, I just see your note there. Welcome from Pleasant Hill, Missouri. Good to have you. Donna in Arkansas. Hello. It's always Good to have you, even if you pop in late. We don't care about what time people show up as long as you come and experience this wonderful community. Let me take one more look. Roman, hello, friend from Salt Lake City. You are there. And let's see, did I miss? <gasps> Andre from Brazil, hello. Oh, it's good to have you. Anybody else that I missed? I'm so sorry. I am scrolling through, I think. I got everyone. Cindy, I'm pretty sure I already said hello to you, Cindy in Denver. If I didn't, hello. If I did, hello, hello, hello again. As always, it is a joy to be able to worship with you, to be in community with you. Don't forget to stay after the worship for a little end of service chat time. And don't forget to get your emblems ready so that we can share in a meal together. Until that time comes, I invite you to get out your singing voice, or if you prefer not to get out your singing voice, get out your, your singing fingers and snap or clap along as we join together and continue 
worship. To Sun City, Arizona, where Rick McGregor is here to read today's lectionary scripture. Rick, welcome to Beyond the Walls. Thank you, John. Our reading today is from the 36th Psalm, verse 5 through 7. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds, your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Amen. And from North America, we head around the world to the Indian Ocean, to the Isle of Reunion, where Kahilani Faaturai Drole is here to preach our communion message in French. Kahilani, bonjour. Bonjour, John. Hi, everyone. <laughs> C'est de l'île de la Réunion que je vous salue tous ce soir. Une île que j'ai connue l'année dernière lors d'un séjour avec des amis de Tours. Voilà plusieurs dimanches que nous explorons les différentes thématiques des principes permanents de l'Église de la Communauté du Christ. Et aujourd'hui, j'aimerais partager avec vous le principe permanent de la valeur de toutes les personnes. Alors que John me demande de partager un message sur ce thème, il y a une chanson qui m'est venue à l'esprit et les paroles de ce chant dit « Jésus aime tous les enfants. » Jésus aime tous les enfants. Jésus aime tous les enfants du monde entier. Qu'ils soient jaunes, rouges, noirs ou blancs, tous les enfants du monde entier. Et c'est un chant que j'ai appris quand j'étais petit, alors que j'allais à l'école du dimanche dans une église protestante dont ma grand-mère était instructrice dans cette église. Dieu considère que chaque personne est d'une valeur inestimable et égale. J'étais dans l'avion pour un trajet de 11 heures entre les États-Unis et la France. Et ce que j'aime faire avant le décollage, eh bien, c'est de voir qu'est-ce qu'il y a comme film à visionner durant le trajet. Alors que je parcourais tous les films, je me suis arrêté sur un titre de film, Invictus. Un film que j'avais visionné il y a bien des années. Et je me rappelle avoir eu un beau souvenir de ce film. Et comme le film dure deux heures, alors j'ai décidé de le visionner encore une fois. Et croyez-moi, c'était comme si je le découvrais pour la première fois. Invictus, un film qui relate une partie de la vie de Nelson Mandela à ses débuts de président de l'Afrique du Sud. J'ai trouvé ces films très touchants d'une bonne moralité et surtout d'une réalité que nous faisons face tous les jours autour de nous. Invictus, une histoire où noir et blanc ne peuvent être ensemble ou encore une très grande inégalité de droits de l'homme. Nelson Mandela, au travers d'une équipe de rugby, a essayé d'unifier son peuple et de redonner la valeur à chaque citoyen, de retrouver une égalité de race et de rétablir la paix dans ce pays. Plus de blancs, plus de noirs, mais des concitoyens pouvant vivre ensemble, manger ensemble, travailler ensemble, et jouer du rugby ensemble. Invictus, 
bien plus qu'un film, mais un exemple de pouvoir vivre ensemble, car Dieu considère que chaque personne est d'une valeur inestimable et égale. Le pardon libère l'âme, il élimine la peur. C'est pourquoi il est, une arme, il est une arme si puissante. Citation de Nelson Mandela. « Parce que tu as du prix à mes yeux, parce que tu es honoré et que je t'aime, je donne des hommes à ta place et des peuples pour ta vie. » Isaïe, chapitre 44, verset 4. Dieu désire que chaque personne connaisse la plénitude du corps, de l'esprit, de l'âme et des relations. J'aimerais vous parler de cette pratique spirituelle qui est le Ho'oponopono, une pratique ancestrale de Hawaii, qui veut dire « retrouver l'équilibre ». Elle était utilisée il y a plusieurs, à plusieurs années, à résoudre les conflits dans les familles, dans les villages, entre voisins ou amis, en utilisant la pratique de la communication non-violente. Professeur de danse hawaïenne de métier depuis plus de 15 ans, j'ai inculqué cette pratique spirituelle dans mon école de danse, en Polynésie et aux États-Unis mais aussi dans tous les stages de danse que je donne. J'aime finir mes semaines de cours ou mes stages de danse avec cette pratique du Ho'oponopono. Nous formons un cercle et chaque personne du cercle est invitée à partager ses sentiments sur ce qu'il a appris durant le cours, comment il s'est senti, mais surtout quelque chose de positif à la personne de sa gauche ou de sa droite. Cette expérience est tellement extraordinaire parce que quand tu te retrouves à côté d'une personne que tu ne connais pas et que tu dois lui dire quelque chose de positif, cela n'est pas souvent évident pour les participants. Mais ce qui est incroyable, c'est l'esprit qui règne durant cet instant un esprit de gratitude, un esprit de confiance en soi et un esprit d'ouverture. J'étais en Angleterre au mois d'août pour un compte famille et j'avais donné deux cours de danse hawaïenne durant ce, durant ce compte de famille. À la fin du cours, alors que l'on pratiquait le Ho'oponopono, un membre de l'église disait je ne pensais pas autant pleurer à un cours de hula. J'ai comme l'impression avoir vécu une relation avec Dieu. L'Éternel, ton Dieu, est au milieu de toi comme un héros qui sauve. Il fera de toi sa plus grande joie. Il gardera le silence de ton amour et il aura pour toi des transports d'allégresse. » Sophonie, chapitre 3, verset 17. « Dieu désire que chaque personne connaisse la plénitude du corps, de l'esprit, de l'âme et des relations. » Nous cherchons aussi à souligner et à restaurer la valeur de toute personne de manière individuelle et communautaire et à défier les systèmes injustes qui diminuent la valeur humaine. Ma mission en Europe a commencé en mai 2019, quelques semaines après la conférence mondiale d'avril 2019, suite à l'invitation de l'apôtre Richard James et frère Joe Williams, qui était le président du centre de mission de l'époque. J'avais tout juste trois semaines de profiter des derniers instants avec ma famille, mes élèves et mes amis. Désigné à servir l'église à Bruxelles avec le 70 L. Ray Harrison, 
Il avait commencé un travail de missionnaire avec une communauté con congolaise en Belgique. Il les visitait, leur donnait des classes et essayait de leur donner des outils afin d'avoir une meilleure intégration dans la société. Depuis mon arrivée à Bruxelles, nous avons accentué les classes sur le ministère du disciple et le document partagé dans la communauté du Christ. Qu'est-ce que cela voulait bien dire pour eux, communauté congolaise vivant à Bruxelles? Nous avons été bénis par la présence de plusieurs personnes extraordinaires que nous avons rencontrées, des familles intéressées au message de la communauté du Christ. Au mois de septembre 2019, nous avons célébré les sacrements du baptême et de la confirmation. Beaucoup ont été témoins de ce moment, si unique pour l'Église en Belgique, mais aussi pour ces personnes qui ont fait le choix de bâtir l'Église dans un pays avec une culture différente de leur origine. Suite à cela, ces nouveaux membres ont créé une association, les concitoyens. Inspiré de l'écriture biblique dans Éphésiens au chapitre 2, verset 19. Ainsi, donc, vous n'êtes plus des étrangers, ni des gens du dehors, mais vous êtes concitoyens des saints, gens de la maison de Dieu. Elle a pour but la promotion de l'aide sociale des personnes réfugiées et migrantes, ainsi que la promotion de la culture au travers de rencontres et activités d'échanges culturels, œcuméniques et interreligieux, d'événements culturels, d'activités de formation et d'information des personnes réfugiées et migrantes, d'activités d'assistance et de soutien destinées particulièrement aux familles monoparentales et personnes LGBT parmi les personnes réfugiées migrantes et d'activités d'éducation à la paix et aux droits humains. Aujourd'hui, l'association continue son ministère grâce au soutien et à la générosité de membres et amis de l'Église que nous remercions. Vous êtes mes disciples vous devez continuer à trouver à l'avant-garde des organisations et des mouvements reconnaissant la valeur des personnes et qui sont consacrés à faire valoir le ministère de mon Fils dans leur vie. Doctrine et Alliance, section 151, alinéa 9. Nous nous joignons à Jésus-Christ pour apporter la bonne nouvelle aux pauvres aux malades, aux captifs et aux opprimés. Ma première expérience au sein de la communauté du Christ remonte à bien des années. Je me trouvais avec mon père qui, lui, s'est converti dans l'église en décembre 2003. Il m'avait invité à aller à la chapelle avec lui et c'était le premier dimanche de sainte seine Catholique que j'étais, cela était très nouveau pour moi de me trouver dans une chapelle de 150 personnes à côté des personnes inconnues à l'époque. Avec beaucoup de curiosité, j'écoutais les chants mélodieux, un message d'évangile poignant et surtout une invitation à la table qui a transformé ma vie et ma compréhension de la communion. Une dame était assise sur le banc juste à côté. Et je lui disais, « Les pasteurs vont passer devant nous pour la distribution de la scène scène ?» Elle me répondit, « Oui. » Et que j'étais aussi invité à prendre part de ce repas. Je la regardais, je lui dis, « Moi, je ne suis pas sanito. Je suis catholique. Je ne peux pas prendre votre communion. » Et voici sa réponse. 
la Sainte Seine n'appartient pas à l'Église Sanito. Mais si tu crois que Jésus est ton sauveur, qu'il est ton exemple, et que c'est lui que tu veux suivre, alors, communions ensemble. Wow! En un instant, tout a, bas, tout a bousculé dans ma tête. Cette dame dont je vous parle était sœur Mareva Arnaud-Chank, qui sert l'Église en tant que président du Conseil des douze apôtres. Et cela a été le début de mon nouveau voyage spirituel au sein de cette famille chrétienne qui est la communauté du Christ. Aujourd'hui, alors que nous parlons de la valeur de toutes les personnes, rappelons-nous de ce symbole d'amour que Dieu nous a offert au travers de son Fils Jésus-Christ. Toi qui suis ce service en ligne, assis chez toi dans ton sofa, ou dans un lit d'hôpital, ou dans un lieu pénitentiaire, peu importe là où tu te trouves, si comme moi, tu crois que Jésus est ton sauveur, qu'il est ton exemple, et que tu veux suivre ses pas en tant qu'artisan de paix, alors je t'invite à la table et partageons ensemble ce repas. Que tu sois jaune, rouge, noir, blanc, Jésus aime tous les enfants du monde entier. Collectivement et individuellement, vous êtes aimé d'un amour éternel qui se réjouit dans chaque pas pris fidèlement. Dieu désire ardemment vous attirer près de lui pour que vos blessures puissent être guéries, le vide empli et l'espoir renforcé. Doctrine et Alliance, section 163, 10. Amen. Amen. Merci, Kahelani. Euh, et maintenant, notre hymne de communion d'aujourd'hui vient du Brésil. Euh, notre chorale chantera d'abord en portugais, euh, puis en espagnol et enfin en anglais. Alors, désolé, Kahelani. Pas de français, c'est trop difficile pour la chorale. Uh, our communion hymn today comes from Brazil. Our choir will sing first in Portuguese, then Spanish, and finally English. Okay? Este himno viene de Brasil, así que vamos a cantar en tres idiomas. Ahí vamos. Let us sing along as we prepare for our sacrament. <laughs> Nosso Pai nos põe a mesa, diz a rica natureza, onde havia luz e pão, nos então nos reunimos, e o que temos repartimos, porque temos comunhão, porque temos comunhão. Nuestro Padre nos invita a la mesa de la vida, donde hay vino, luz y pan, y nosotros nos reunimos y lo nuestro compartimos, pues así es la comunión, pues así es la comunión. God extends a To the table of creation Where there's wine and light and bread Here we gather in thanksgiving And we offer all our living Here the feast of life is spread Here the feast of life is spread God extends an invitation To the table of creation Where there's wine and light and bread 
and community of Christ, the Lord's Supper is a sacrament in which we remember the life, death, and living presence of Jesus Christ. Through partaking of the emblems, we renew the covenant we made through baptism. We reconcile and strengthen relationships and we commit ourselves to Christ's mission in the world. Others may have different or added understandings within their faith traditions. We invite all who participate in the Lord's Supper to do so as an expression of the love and peace of Jesus Christ in whose name we worship. All are welcome at Christ's table. If you're joining us live from beyond our walls and you have emblems prepared in your location, we invite you to partake alongside the disciples gathered here. If you're watching the service recorded, we do ask that you wait to participate until you can be with us in real time. However your body best allows you to have a worshipful posture, for some that might be kneeling as best as you are able towards your emblems, for others that might just be simply bowing your head and maybe for others, clasping your hands, however you feel best to be in a prayerful and worshipful posture, I invite you to be in that posture as I offer a combined blessing on the bread and the wine. And then we will all eat and drink together globally. Shall we pray? Eternal God, we ask you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread and wine to the souls of all those who receive them, that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the body and blood of your son and witness to you, O oh God, that they are willing to take upon them the name of your son and always remember him and keep the commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Let's share together. I invite you once again to sing another wonderful, wonderful hymn. And then afterwards, don't forget, don't leave after the postlude. Stay for just a few more moments and then we'll prepare for the lecture. So let's sing together.
Before we go, I want to check in with all of you on our Draw the Circle wide fundraiser. As regular viewers know, the Center Place YouTube channel is the number one entry point for seekers encountering Community of Christ globally. A key goal of our Draw the Circle wide initiative is to add professional expertise and to do some advertising in order to grow the channel. And in preparation for that campaign, Leandra and I have spent time organizing the channel, updating old thumbnails, adding video shorts. That little amount of input alone has corresponded with significant results and just an amazing week for our channel. So for example, nearly 50,000 people have already watched the Biblical Studies lecture that I gave just last, last Tuesday on the Canaanite god Baal. It's hard to even put, grasp these numbers, but 50,000 people and just since Tuesday. For us, that's an unprecedented number in so short a time. In the same last week alone, we have gained another 1,100 new subscribers to the channel and people have spent a combined 68,000 hours watching Center Place lectures, worship services, and church music on YouTube just this week, just in the past seven days. The Draw the Circle Wide campaign will help us take this ministry to the next level, from reaching tens of thousands of seekers to reaching hundreds of thousands. And so we thank you so much for your generosity. If you'd like us help to Draw the Circle Wide, you can contribute at our website centerplace.ca slash donate, or of course you can give via e-tithing. Community of Christ has been engaged in a worldwide discernment process, collectively and individually pondering the question, who is God calling to be the next prophet and president of the church? Tonight I will be giving an address sponsored by the John Whitmer Historical Association that will put this question into some historical context. How have past presidents been called? To what extent has Community of Christ been a theo-democracy? To what extent have we been a constitutional prophetic monarchy? And how constitutional or how autarkic have our prophet presidents been? So we'll examine these questions and more tonight. This JWHA event will be live streamed on Facebook and YouTube, also by Center Place, uh, this evening after the late edition at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Pacific. Go forth now with the words of counsel canonized in section 165 of the Doctrine and Covenants, verse 6a and b. Beloved community of Christ, do not just speak and sing of Zion. Live, love, and share as Zion. Those who strive to be visibly one in Christ, among whom there are no poor or oppressed. As Christ's body, lovingly and patiently bear the weight of criticism from those who hesitate to respond to the divine vision of human worth and equality in Christ. This burden and this blessing is yours for divine purposes. Amen. you to stay with us after the postlude. If you're here in the prime service, I will be talking with our ministers. And if you're here with late edition, Noel will be here to chat with all of you.
Hello again. I just wanted a moment to be able to say have a fantastic week. And I truly hope that you're able to stay and be a part of this lecture. It is going to be amazing. I'm actually gonna pop some popcorn during this small break between now and the lecture start time. So get comfy and enjoy the upcoming lecture and have an amazing week. We've got some fun things coming up. We have another lecture Tuesday. On Wednesday, we have an opportunity to join together for our Community of Christ 101 Basic Beliefs Gathering. We have on Thursday, our Chatterday Saints, an opportunity to just be relaxed and get to visit with each other. And of course, we always have these moments on Sundays to be together. If you are looking for links, visit our website, visit uh, centerplace.ca, and you'll be able to experience all the things that unite us in between Sunday and Sunday. If you like meditation every morning, there's a wonderful opportunity to join together and to meditate. Or for some of you, it might be your chance to cool down at the end of the day and to meditate before bed. Whatever time it is, wherever you are, any chance that we have to join together is amazing. So I'll see you next week and in just a few moments for the lecture. Have an amazing week. You are loved. Until next time.